Can't you just feel it? The conflict is becoming apparent in our culture. It reminds me of those words of John Paul II. We're now living in the final confrontation between the gospel and the anti-gospel, between the church and the anti-church, between Christ and the antichrist. And if we don't choose to know God's word, to believe God's word, and follow God's word, we're going to be a sitting duck for all kinds of confusion, all kinds of disorder. Those are really important choices that people have to make. And these choices are difficult. Who am I going to marry? What kind of life am I going to live? How am I going to raise my kids? What am I going to do with my time, my talent, and my treasure? And I have to make a choice today. Jesus says to each one of us, I came that you might have life and have it to the full. The question is, do we want it? Hey, welcome to another week of the choices we face. We have some very special guests this week and next week, we have Ulf and Birgitta Ekman from Sweden. They actually came all the way from Sweden to be with us for a few days here in Ann Arbor. And Ulf and Birgitta have very generously offered to uh, stay and do a couple of TV programs with us. So today we have Ulf, and next week we'll have Ulf and Birgitta. And they tell their story in a book called The Great Discovery, Our Journey to the Catholic Church. Ulf and Birgitta were well-known figures in Sweden and throughout the world in, in being evangelists and, and, and preachers and teachers and uh, ended up having the largest mega church in Sweden and uh, branches all over the world and, and people they were helping all over the world. And then they became Catholic, which was really a shocking development for many, many people in Sweden and around the world. And, Ulf, it's great to have you with us. Thank you, Ralph. And, and hear a little bit about your story. So start at the beginning, like you were born and then what happened? Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was born in uh, Gothenburg in Sweden, which is the uh, second largest city. It's a big harbor. Uh, grew up uh, as a, in an ordinary family. Uh, and uh, as far as, as Christianity, religion, I mean, the, uh, I was baptized and, and uh, later confirmed in the Lutheran church, the Lutheran state church at that time in Sweden uh, and uh, didn't think much about it. Uh, I was not, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I believed in God, but I didn't really, uh, it was not something that was in, in, on the forefront of my mind. Mm -hmm. As a teenager, you rebelled against everything. Now we're talking about the 60s. <laughs> and, 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 uh, uh, but I could never say that you know, God does not exist. Sure. Uh, of course, and you know, 68, what happened and so forth. Uh, 19 a lot of people don't know what happened. Oh, I'm sorry, so, sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, 90, uh, well, 1968, was a, uh, it was a big, uh, uh, Leftist movement with uh, with uh, uh, young students demonstrating all over Europe, especially. I, I mean, a lot of things happen here in the U.S. as well. Uh, and uh, it was uh, all like neo-Marxism was coming very strongly. And uh, these were so it was strong leftist movements with an antagonism, of course, against the U.S. and and uh, the war in Vietnam and all these things were going on. In the midst of this. Um, you have the hippie movement, and you have all these things, and and so you know, as a confused teenager, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, I have a friend, and uh, he was we were constantly talking about all these things, different philosophies, existentialism, and so forth, and then one day he comes to me and says that. Uh, I become a Christian, or actually said, I'm saved. I'm, I'm saved. And I thought, yeah. this is ridiculous, you know. Uh, how can this happen? And uh, I, I, I shun away from him. I, I, I'm very nervous on the inside. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt this is the first time we have been talking for years uh, about all these things, and we were involved in so many different things, political activities, and, mm -hmm. uh, and all, you name it. But now when he speaks, it's like this, this just hits me. <laughs> yeah. And I run away. Uh, I, I refuse to meet him, refuse to, to come in contact with him. After three months, I think that, well, I, this is not decent. I have at least talk with him, he's my, he's my friend. Mm -hmm. Went over to his house and he started to witness to me about Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, I sat and listened and I felt very uneasy on the inside. Yeah. Uh, and then he said, should we pray? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> 
I mean, why should I say that, you know? And he said, but can I pray? Well, it's your home. I said, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> and and, and uh, I listened to him as he prayed. I, I couldn't take it. It was something so strong. So I just stood up, ran out of his uh, apartment, wow. just banged the door and uh, ran down to... Uh, uh, Something inside you have very, triggered, yeah. uh, very triggered. Very, uh, I was very upset, uh, and uh, rationally, uh, there was really no reason. I mean, this is one of many religions. We've mm. been discussing religions. We've been into checking Hinduism, Buddhism. You know all these things that everybody was doing that time and still are doing. By yeah, the way. <laughs> right. And, and uh, uh, but this was, it was really. So I jumped on a, a tram. Do you, you know a tra uh, this? Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, like a trolley or a uh, trolley. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, sat uh, on it. It was a 45 uh, minute long ride back to my home. Mm -hmm. And like every five minutes, I heard on the inside, you can receive forgiveness of sins. Oh. And it shocked me. Yeah. And it was like a, a film just rolling uh, mm -hmm. things that I, at that moment, knew this is not just bad behavior or this is sin, mm. uh, a word that I would never use. Yeah. And uh, so after 45 minutes, I, I came to uh, my home. I, I got into um, my little room, closed the door. And uh, for the first time ever, I, of course, he had suggested it, my friend, but I, I, I just uh, ran away from it. For the first time ever, got down on my knees and uh, uh, folded my hands and uh, closed the door tightly so nobody would see me. I was really scared. And, 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 and said, Jesus, if what my friend says is true, uh, I want it. Is that something? Yeah. I want forgiveness of sins. Uh, instantly, there was a, an emotional experience, not a, not, a, I mean, not a strong mystical experience, but something just lifted. Mm -hmm. From me, uh, I don't know if you go to sauna baths or uh, we do a lot in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very intense. You know, when you sit in there, it's very hot, and and yeah. uh, you walk out of it, it's like, ah, <sighs> yeah, and that's the feeling. Okay, yeah, and and so I f I fell asleep. This was Saturday night, uh, Sunday morning. I woke up with, and the first thing that I noticed was clear conscience, a good conscience, just felt peace. Yeah. I couldn't explain it. it was yeah. just, I heard the birds singing very clearly. It was beautiful. It was the end of May. It surprised me. It was like a, it was like a, a now a I can understand. To it. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It was like a new world. Yeah. And um, I, I noticed there was uh, I was uh, I didn't feel like I wanted a, a, a cigarette. Uh, it was instantly lost the appetite for for smoking. Wow. In the, that very. Just gone. Yeah. And uh, so I woke up, uh, had breakfast, and I figured it's Sunday. Uh, so what do Christians do on Sunday? Because <laughs> I just I said, look, I, I'm, I think I'm a Christian. So I told my parents, I said, I'm going to take a walk. I didn't want to tell them anything about what was going on. You I, were a teenager at this time? I was 19 and a half. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So on my way into the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I went down to the local Lutheran church where I had been confirmed many years ago. And um, came in with a few old women and instantly I felt, I don't belong here. You know, there was this, uh, it was pride coming immediately. Yeah, yeah. But I forced myself to go in, sit in the back. And it's this is a cathedral-like, neo-Gothic type mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. Few people, and uh, there comes the uh, very old-fashioned Lutheran minister, mm -hmm. and he goes has a long sermon. This is the tradition on the west coast of Sweden. The very, uh, very old-fashioned Lutherans. So he speaks for maybe twenty, twenty-five minutes on. Uh, what is sin? Oh. Uh, how does sin uh, separate you from God? Oh, yeah. uh, what is the gospel? Uh, wow. What is repentance? So you got sort of like an explanation of what you experienced. Total explanation. Yeah, that's, that's really wonderful that the Lord did that for you. Say, this is what happened to you, Alfie. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, in detail. I was shocked. Yeah. Almost every sentence. Well, I know what he's talking about. Yes. This is what happened last night. Yeah. And, and then, uh, and, uh, and then he's like Jesus said, like the Holy Spirit will remind you of what I said. Like the Holy Spirit was interpreting for you what, what you had just experienced. Exactly. Yeah. In a very clear way. So 
When the sermon was over, I, when, and, and, uh, and the uh, ma mass, because we use the word Lutheran use for service mass. Yeah. And uh, I went out, I felt I need to do what he said, I need to pray again. So I prayed the same prayer as last yeah. night, and from that moment I, I knew I was a Christian. Yeah. And uh, of course I had been baptized, and now I can see you know, that uh, baptismal grace has been working all along mm -hmm. uh, in, in uh, uh, being in that environment, but still not going to the very extremes of all the things that I came in contact with. Yeah. So it's like the Lord in one way also yeah. served. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this was, this was absolutely new. I was so happy. I was so overjoyed, yeah. but I couldn't explain it. I had no religious uh, terms for it. Yeah. Uh, now, how'd you go from there to become known as the Billy Graham of Sweden? Well, I mean, uh, which which I read in this book. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, this uh, very uh, whatever. Uh, you were a very prominent evangelist. Uh, well, I. Uh, so what happened? Well, what what happened was to make it short. Uh, I, uh, uh, I I I. I called my friend, he got overjoyed, got together with uh, uh, a few Christians that I've never been uh, associating with before. Yeah. One of them was an American. Uh, he was from the hippie movement, but then he had come over with the Jesus movement to Sweden. Yeah. And he asked me, uh, uh, do you know anything about uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Do oh, yeah. you have any idea about something called tongues? Yeah. I said, yeah, I've seen on television, they warn against it, and there was a certain program and so on. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then uh, let's go over to my house. He said, I can tell you more. We went over there. And he asked me again about it. And when I was supposed to answer him, something happened. And it just hit me. Uh -huh. And, and uh, uh, my whole being, this was distinctly different from uh, f a few weeks later, uh, b before when I first uh, received, asked Jesus to come into my yeah. life and, and felt that peace. Mm -hmm. This was an, uh, it's like somebody poured a bucket of, of uh, uh, peace, uh, uh, now I have the religious words for it, anointing and, and yeah. so forth, but it was a distinct experience that, uh, that uh, almost shocked me, mm -hmm. uh, but it was... Uh, like just hearing him speak about being baptized in the Spirit. Yes, and no explanation. Yeah. Oh. No, no, no explanation whatsoever, you just ask the question. And something happened to something you, like the love of happened. God flooded into your yes, soul. Yes, yeah. flooded, flooded for yeah. two hours. Oh, wow. Just flooded, flooded, flooded. Well, the Lord decided that... Get him now before he changes his mind. <laughs> I don't know, but, yeah. but it was... So that, that, of course, I go back and look at. Uh, this is uh, the infilling of the, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And it resulted in also in speaking in tongues. Yeah. Uh, this was, it was time for me to go to Uppsala uh, Start University. I started... Uh, 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 the program there in the in the fall met an evangelical group called the Navigators. Oh yes, yes, yeah. they're a wonderful, very solid group. Yeah. Very solid group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were a little nervous about me because I spoke about the Holy Spirit all the time. Yeah, yeah. They, I came they're not, yeah, they're I had long not. hair, you know, and I didn't know much about the Bible. Yeah. And they very, very generously just sat me down and said, you know, let's go through the scriptures and yeah. let's meet every week. Yeah. Uh, I, I, Their Bible studies are very good. wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So for uh, six years, I was in. Uh, Bible studies, especially the book. Oh, what a great Romans, formation uh, that was! Wonderful formation, yeah. and because I needed it, I yeah. really needed it, yeah. and also, uh, so I took a bachelor of philosophy and then went on to theology, mm -hmm. and uh, took a bachelor of of to uh, of theology to and to be formed for uh, ministry in the Lutheran Church, mm -hmm. and eventually became uh, ordained minister in in the Lutheran Church. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so uh, at, and during that period, uh, from 1970 to 1979, I was very much involved in evangelistic ministry uh, with the students. So, student evangelization was my life uh, mm -hmm. through the Navigators, which was in Sweden very ecumenical mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, also open in why more open I would say than in the U.S. at that time to the charismatic yeah. movement. But I was not really in the charismatic movement mm -hmm. until I met my wife, uh, mm -hmm. which uh, began. And I met 1976, and uh, um, 
uh, then the gifts of the Spirit in the mind we started to... I mean, she came from a Pentecostal tradition? Or, uh, uh, Methodist tradition, but yeah. also had been uh, touched by the charismatic yeah. uh, renewal. Yeah. So that was very... So the combination, the charismatic renewal, which I didn't know much about, to be yeah. honest. I mean, I come from a secular background. Yeah. And the forming, the evangelical formation of, of mm -hmm. really getting to know the Scripture. Good combination. And, yeah, it's a good combination. <laughs> yeah. I'm very the happy. The word for it. and the spirit. Exactly. Yeah. Very happy. So I worked as a student chaplain in in Uppsala uh, for a couple of years, uh, which was wonderful. I, I enjoyed it very much. In that period, I saw a great need among young people to. Uh, uh, um, study scripture more, but also to to be more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and to be willing to become uh, missionaries or to evangelize and yeah. be witnesses in, yeah. in their ordinary life. Now, how did you go, though, from campus ministry to a worldwide mission? Well, this is uh, uh, what happened uh, I, when I saw this need. Uh, eventually, we decided that we uh, needed to start some form of... Uh, Bible school. Mm -hmm. I went, I took one year off, Birgit and I went to the US uh, uh, to uh, uh, Tulsa uh, oh, yeah. to uh, be in a Bible school there for a year. Is that Oral Roberts University? Uh, we were also hooked up with Oral okay. Roberts University, but it was, but it was also uh, Rayma Bible. Okay, oh yes, yes, yes. And what helped me there was two, three things. It was, I mean, the, the the, the natural way that they spoke about the Holy Spirit and the personal way they, 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 they wanted to be led by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the desire to, uh, to grow churches, to uh, actually uh, local congregations that were growing. Mm -hmm. uh, and to see that and also to see uh, uh, studies in a charismatic environment at Royal Roberts University, these things together really was very new for me, mm -hmm. something that, that... The whole vision of starting churches and reaching out in a exactly. bold, aggressive way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and going to mission fields yeah, and yeah. To training people, both spiritually, uh, but also uh, intellectually. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, start, because of that, we started a Bible school. And at that time in Sweden, there were hardly any Bible schools. There was, Methodists had one and they had about five students, I think. Yeah. It was short Bible schools uh, for a month mm -hmm. or something like that. An evangelist, Pentecostal evangelist I, I met, he said, uh, uh, well, you know, I, I've gone to Bible school. Uh, I said, how long? Well, oh, for a month, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. so that was the, on that level. So we did a one-year program, then a two-year program. And during uh, those years, we eventually graduated over uh, 10,000 students. <laughs> so, so was that like on site or? or on site, yes. Wow, like 10,000 people actually came to Sweden? Yes, yes. Came, yeah. came to Upsa. I've actually run into some Catholics around the world who, have been, who went to your Bible study. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bible school, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Really, uh, it, it, it was a. How did you get ten thousand people to come? Well, they didn't come at once, you know. I mean, yes. It, it, yeah. We start, but we started with uh, two hundred students. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, tremendous. It, it was really, a, it was really something. It didn't, it had not happened at that time as well. Yeah. yeah. I was surprised. Everybody was surprised, but there was a hunger. Yeah. in the land yeah. for the Word of God, yeah. especially among the young people. Yeah. So, uh, and the Word of God in the communion with the, with the understanding of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the leading of the Spirit. But it was also, um, so there was a growth and uh, this turned into a local congregation as well. Uh, the co this congregation grew. Is that the Word of Life? This is Word of Life. Yeah, yeah. read about the Word of Life. Word of Life Bible School and the uh, Word of Life local congregation. Mm -hmm. Then in the... Uh, end of the 80s, uh, we started to sense that the Lord had something for it. We had sent out, actually, during that time, uh, hundreds of uh, teams of uh, young people mm -hmm. for different type of evangelization. Yeah. But 89, uh, the wall fell down. Uh, the Iron Curtain fell down. Yeah, big, yeah. big thing. And at that time, we had really, really sensed that we... Uh, well, some of our evangelists had gone into Russia since 85, but Soviet Union at that time. But we sensed very strongly that the Lord wanted, that the purpose, now we've been working from 1983, we started, uh, uh, founded the ministry and started it, and up to 89. And there, um, I mean, there was a couple thousand people that had been very heavily involved in this. Mm -hmm. Now was the time to do something. And I felt very strongly from the Holy Spirit. Uh, we built a building, that, a church building, that was the, uh, became the largest free church building in Sweden. We mm -hmm. had 
4,000 seats. Wow. And, and, oh, yes. uh, uh, and we used it for conference and for, you know, yeah. multi-purpose uh, and so on. Yeah. And uh, I was a happy pastor, a uh, free church pastor by that time. Yeah. And uh, so we had uh, raised lots of, of uh, money for this building, but not enough. So we also took some loans. And I felt the responsibility we should, you know, pay off the debts, of course, yeah. to be able to go on. And then I'm standing in the church one day and I, I, I just hear the Holy Spirit. You can, hear, you can, you know. Yes. Not everything you hear is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But sometimes you really yeah, hear you it. Yeah, you say, wow, I think that was just from the Lord. You yeah. Know, I, wow, where did that come from? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. because yeah. It, it, it's a thought that you never thought. Yeah, it just kind of... It just kind of comes. comes. Yeah. And, and uh, so there's a distinction. You, you have to... You have to uh, be careful and you have to weigh it out, so to speak. But it came very naturally. I had a, a little, a word came to me like in the early, early uh, 70s. You will work in the Soviet Union, but not now. Mm. Now we're in 1989 and, and... You feel like the signal was given. Exactly. I prepared you for this. Yeah, Get yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the Lord said, I want you to invest. Uh, 40 million Swedish crowns into the Soviet Union in four years. Now, there's 40 million Swedish crowns is about 8 million US dollars. Well, that's a lot, yeah. Uh, and I was like, I don't have any money. Yeah, yeah, I've got some loans in my building. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And Lord, uh, you know, just so you know, I need to be a yeah. diligent steward of yeah. this and, and pay off the loans. Yeah. And I heard on the inside uh, uh, just a beautiful laughter. Yeah, like the cattle on 10,000 hills are mine. You know? uh, yeah, yeah, trust That's, me, trust yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, trust, yeah, right. So, so yeah. I said, okay, we'll do it. And uh, honestly, four years, I prayed one prayer. And that was initially when I felt this, one prayer. But, but something was going, of course, you know. They, they, this is not in a vacuum. This is, uh, many things are, yeah. are being prepared that you don't see or understand. And in four years, we put 48 million Swedish crowns, which would have been like nine, nine million yeah. US dollars worth of the gospel into the Soviet Union. Oh, thanks be to God, yeah. It opened up, we were able to go in, start uh, having conferences. I know the first couple of years after the wall fell down, there's just, just a lot of openness wasn't there, yeah. We had these young people, they were ready to go. We yeah. sent them everywhere. We sent them from St. Petersburg and to Magadan. To, yeah. We sent yeah. them to the, yeah. and in the midst of this, there's a KGB agent visiting us in Uppsala because uh, they would come by, you know, because they wonder yeah. what in the world are these guys doing over yeah. there. And he said, "I have a train, you know, if you want to, uh, if you want to um, um, uh, lease this train, for, uh, you're happy. We're happy to do. You're, we're happy to help you." Mm -hmm. And I said, "What is it? Well, it's the Komsomol propaganda train." And then he said. Komsomol is the youth uh, communist organization yeah. in the Soviet Union. Yeah. And then he said, and it's not going very good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I said, no, no, no wonder. And so we, we rented this train two summers, 13 wagons, and to, filled it with books, with tapes, with uh, medical supplies, wow. with, uh, with uh, uh, food and clothing, and teams preaching the gospel. Well, wow. now, I'm so glad we scheduled two programs because I'm sorry, my friend is me. No, it's, it. it's absolutely wonderful. It's yeah. fascinating. It's yeah. inspiring. But I know at a certain point, how did you start thinking about becoming a Catholic? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, as this exploded, yeah. uh, and, and we were going everywhere. We had to form and we have to train these people. Uh, new congregations all over. We, uh, we were working with a thousand, one thousand, uh, congregations within the former Soviet Union. Wow. Uh, this is wonderful, but it also causes some problems. Yeah. Who is supposed to be a pastor and not? Yeah. What is right, is right doctrine and what is not? Who yeah. has the final say-so in this? Yeah. And on what basis? Yeah, how is the church supposed to be structured, organized, yeah, led, yeah. What about what about uh, sacraments? We didn't use the term sacrament, yeah. but who can, uh, who can, who is responsible right. for for communion and so, so forth? So that got you thinking. Got me. That got think you studying. Got me studying so much. Yeah. And the problem was for me that every good answer I got came from the Catholics. Okay, we got to stop there for now, Ulf. But I'm so glad that Brigida will be with us on the next program, and we can actually talk about what happened.
when you started getting Catholic answers to your exactly. evangelical Pentecostal questions. Exactly. Yeah, thanks so much for being with us today. Look forward to our next program with Brigida. Thank you. My friend Peter Herbeck has written a booklet called Unfailing Promises. And in this time of confusion, we really need to know clearly what Jesus has promised us, the, the amazing promise he's made to be with us always to the very end of the age, and the amazing promise he's made to us to not leave us orphans, but to send us the Holy Spirit. So we'd like to send you this booklet at no cost just for the asking. Uh, call the 800 number on the screen or go to our website, renewalministries.net, click on free booklet, and we'll get it right out to you. And tell all your friends that next week, we're going to have a program with Ulf and Brigida Ekman, and they're going to talk about their amazing journey from being a mega church pastor, supervising a thousand different churches to becoming a Catholic. We live in unsettling and challenging times. People everywhere are reaching for an anchor, something that's true, something they can hold on to. St. Peter tells us we can find this security in what he called the precious and very great promises of God. The Bible is filled with promises that come directly from the heart of a loving Father. And they've all been fulfilled for us in Christ. I've written this booklet, Unfailing Promises, to help you lay hold of promises that will give you the hope and strength needed in the face of any and every kind of trial. To receive a free copy, please visit our website or call the number on screen. I went to church and just sat there and listened. I really didn't absorb anything. I think I just found myself believing that I didn't need God. I just had everything under control and church was actually a, a burden to me. I had this sin that I carried in my heart for a long time. And I told myself for many, many years that the Lord wouldn't forgive me for this. When, when Father in the confessional says, your sins are forgiven, there truly is a, a feeling of, of weight lifted off. I don't care if it's two or three little sins that you're...